This video is created by the Standards and Interoperability Lab, Asia. This session, we will be having an introduction on fire. The presentation will be as follows. World on Fire. We will be discussing brief background on the start of fire and how it is used today. What is fire? Let us get to know fire more in details. Fire Manifesto. The Working Principles of Fire. Fire Resources. In this part, we will be looking in detail fire resources and elements. Exchange Module. We will look at the possible methods available in exchanging data on fire. Before we discuss about fire, let me would give some brief introduction on HL7 or Health Level 7. HL7 is a not-for-profit, ANSI-accredited standards development organization founded in 1987. It is dedicated to provide a comprehensive framework and related standards for the exchange, integration, sharing and retrieval of electronic health information. Let me emphasize that. It is not the standards but it is a standardization organization, a community. Let us look at some standards by HL7. HL7 v2 is the de facto standard in healthcare data exchange. Its focus is on message exchange. HL7 CDA is another standard released by HL7. Its focus is on document exchange which includes XML encoded metadata fields and MIME type body document. FIRE is the latest standard of the HL7 organization. FIRE uses web technologies and sharing messages and documents. Here we can see the different standards syntax. HL7 v2 message syntax is composed of texts, pipes, and hats. HL7 CDA use XML format in exchanging documents, and FIRE uses an interface in accessing the data leaving the main structure to the implementer using the specifications as a guide. Compared to other methodology and standards, the complexity of implementation and manipulation of FIRE resources remains low, as it is pretty simple using the REST API. Its capacity and semantic usage has defined lots of resources and it continuously grow with extensions, for different healthcare use cases and processes. Currently, lots of healthcare applications, companies and hospitals, are already using the FHIR standards. This includes Apple's Health App, Google's Cloud Healthcare API and Microsoft's Azure API for FHIR. So what is this FHIR? FIRE is an acronym that stands for FAST Healthcare Interoperability Resources. FAST, relatively fast, faster transactions and implementations. Healthcare, why we're here, for healthcare purposes. Interoperability, what we want, to communicate with these on different healthcare systems. Resources, this is FIRE's asset. This is the building blocks of FIRE. FIRE is a standard for healthcare data exchange published by HL7. It combines the best and worth keeping features of HL7's V2, HL7 V3 and CDA. While looking into the modern communication platforms and latest web standards. A quick overview on the version history of FIRE. It started with the original proposal name RFH on the year 2011. Then followed with a couple of DSTU publications or draft standard for trial use where implementers and specifiers test it and gives feedback iteratively. Recently, they released the first normative version of the standard which is called R4. Though only the basic technology and some common resources are already normative the others will still be in the development process. FIRE uses this manifesto as a guide or rule in developing the FIRE standards. Focus on implementers. FIRE specification is written for one target audience, the implementers. They will be the one to decide if it can be successful or adapted because they will be the one using it. It should be fast and easy to implement. There are multiple implementation libraries and examples available plus the extensive and well-written specification. 
target support for common scenarios. Heavy emphasis on the 80-20 rule. Cover only the 80% of the use cases and allow the remaining 20% for extensions. Enable and encourage extensions for specialized use cases or for localization. Leverage cross-industry web technologies. Reusing existing and successful web technologies that implementers are already using. Instances shared using XML and JSON, same technologies used in web calls in Facebook and Twitter. Support human readability as base level of interoperability. Specifications are concise and easy to understand. It also uses a human-readable serialization format that will be easy for the developers to implement. And for the end-users, information is modeled as human-readable as possible using narratives and resources. Make content freely available. Fire itself is licensed under the Creative Commons No Rights Reserved License or CC0. Fire tutorial materials are generally also under the CC0. The software is generally MIT or Apache 2. The specification is also free for use with no restrictions. Support multiple paradigms and architectures. The standard should be scalable as the health data is. Fire does not impose specific use model and can be adapted to different architecture. It can be used as a lightweight application on mobile devices or wearables. It can also be an integration component to existing systems or it can serve as central data repository. When we visit the FHIR specification, which by the way can be found in www.hl7.org slash fire slash index.html, we will see parts of FHIR grouped into the similarities of their functions. Level 1, basic framework on which the specification is built. You'll see in this level general information you need to know before you get started and this includes the underlying technologies. Level 2 supporting implementation and binding to external specifications. In this level you can find the guides for implementers from downloads, test cases, security, conformance, terminology services to exchanging messages. Level 3 linking to real-world concepts in the healthcare system. This includes the basic resources that is usually needed in a healthcare system. Level 4 record keeping and data exchange for the healthcare process. Specific use case resources can be seen in this level. This include data for reports, from clinical, diagnostics, medications, workflow until finance resources. Level 5 providing the ability to reason about the healthcare process. This is for clinical reasoning of resources available in the system. At its core, FIR contains two primary components, resources and API. Fire resources is the building blocks of fire. Resources is a container of information which represents something in real world. Reading one resource can reveal a resource with links to other resources. Like when a patient feels something and visits a practitioner, an encounter will exist and upon examination of the practitioner, observations can be recorded for that encounter. There are roughly 160 fire resources available and can be checked in the resource list in their site. It can be represented in multiple formats, JSON, XML, Turtle. Resources can be found in www.hl7.org slash fireresourcelist.html. Resources are categorized in different ways. Looking into the list of resources, you may notice a number or letter N, beside the resource name. This is the maturity level of the resource. Maturity level ranges from draft, 1, 5 and normative. N means normative, the artifact is considered stable and you can be sure that minimum to no changes will be made for the next releases. It's a guide for implementers to judge how advanced or stable the resources are. Here is a sample specific resource. A most common one. Resource patient. 
you will see a tree structure of the elements under the resource and with data types and shore descriptions and constraints. To get specific information on the data elements, you may click on the link and it will show the specification on that element. Fire data types is categorized into four simple or primitive data types, which are single elements with a primitive value. General purpose or complex data types, reusable clusters of elements. Metadata types, used for metadata resources. And special purpose data types, defined in the specification for specific usage. Primitive types are those with only a value, and no additional elements as children. Integers, strings, boolean are among others. Complex data types are elements with elements. Like in ratio, it has numerator and denominators as sub-elements. In a period data type it has sub-elements start and end. Metadata types like contact detail, a contributor-related artifact is used in specifying elements used for metadata. Special purpose types are for specific usage such as extensions for defining extension resources and elements or narrative for human readable format. An instance of a resource is usually composed of four parts. Metadata Narrative Extensions and Body Shown here is an XML representation of a resource observation instance of a patient for fast glucose result. Metadata, which is in blue box, includes the resource ID which is 287, and this version is the second revision of the resource observation. Metadata may also include, tags and profiles. The orange box contains the narrative part which is the human readable representation. It is not required but highly encouraged as it will help in better understanding of the information presented. Next will be extensions on green box. This part has the added information that's not defined in the 80. Remember the 80 to 20 rule? In this example, an extension for the context of the reading of the fasting glucose is added. It is added in the core observation resource. On the red box contains body or the elements associated with the resource. In this instance it has the elements code which identifies international coding system subject that is reference to a patient resource and other information the other fire main component is the api it is a collection of well-defined interfaces for interoperating between two applications although not required the fire specification targets restful interfaces for api implementation and if we want move or exchange resources into different systems, we need to have exchange module which FHIRE also defines it in its specifications. RESTful API is a client, server API, for web-based application, designed to follow the principles of RESTful design which includes creation, reading, updating and deleting operations plus along with searching and executing, operations, support. Exchange of routed messages is also supported which can be implemented on the RESTful API or using some other messaging technology. This will help on how to how to exchange content based on their own architectural and deployment considerations. The specification also defines a document-based exchange framework, where content to be exchanged is wrapped by a composition resource that provides the context of the content and that has a fixed presentation for a human reader. Another exchange framework is using FHIRE in a framework that may be developed by the implementers to move resources as service like in a service oriented architecture. Database Another way to use the resources defined by FHIRE is to store them in a database where different applications or modules transact with it as part of their implementation. FHIRE makes it easy for us to define resources and to exchange those resources in different methods for different systems. For additional information, you may visit the FHIRE specification site at www.hl7.org slash fire slash index.html. Thank you very much.